And then, hey, everybody, we are live with Peter Lynch, and I am going to go over here and try to tag you, <laughs> live Goodbye. tag you, then get the heck off of this thing so that I preserve my RAM. <laughs> Come on. With Peter Lynch, and I am going to go. Oh, my, that's a delay. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Word. Okay. <laughs> okay. Live with Peter Lynn. Oh, you know what? All right. What happened to my phone? What happened to my phone? Okay. Because I use a third party software. Yeah. I can only edit it using my phone, which is why I couldn't live tag many ah, people yes. yesterday. So now I'm going on my phone here. So I can <laughs> go on my profile while everybody else is watching the Facebook Live. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Uh -huh. I'm, and I'm sharing it too. Yeah. And then, uh, okay. But it's worth it to have you tagged on here. Here we are. Edit the post. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it on my laptop got to do it right here okay edit the post all right there you are okay nice now you're live tagged <laughs> all right hey everybody now peter's live tagged this is meta 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 here that's awesome a little inception oh it's just yeah hey everybody we got a little little delay here going on oh Focus. All right. <laughs> it's a party. It's a big party. Okay. So, all right. Looking at all my essential and non-essential programs right now. Going to take this silly <laughs> timer off. All right. Very good. All right. And uh, were you able, did, did you uh, have a chance to join the Facebook uh, alumni group, even though you're not technically an alumni yet, you will be in about 20 minutes? Uh, I don't know if I did. I'll, okay. I'll, check, I'll check that. Okay, because I had that whole onboarding thing. So uh, yeah. this is one of the things I'm trying to cut out in the future. Yeah. But uh, first two minutes, go behind the talk. Just summarize sure. the big picture of the talk, like like sure. I think I said in the video. Uh, don't tell me, well, Nathan, first I had to apply, and then yeah. I, you know, they paired me. Don't do that. Don't be that guest because I've had, you know, after like the first ten guests said that, <laughs> I <laughs> thought you know no that's that's not what i mean so summarize the big picture of your talk it's not a performance you already gave the performance For tell sure. me a story big picture whatever you forget to say is fine then we're yeah. going to have a conversation peter i'm going to stay true to the spirit of whatever conversation we're having and um you know just just i'll be as flexible and fluid with that uh, as I can. Then we'll get into the blitz round after about 10 minutes, and those are the either-or questions related to the prep and performance of your talk. And then we have the final word of advice. And uh, what I started doing is I've put my own ads in be uh, uh, by just putting a little you know, hey, and in a moment, we'll be back for the blitz round. In a moment, we'll be back for the final word of advice. And then I'll shut up for one second for my audio person, then I'll say, and we're back with the blitz round, you know? And <laughs> so just that's, that's your cue because last week when I started doing this, I had a couple people just, just kind of zip the lip for a while. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's, <laughs> this is, this is your time. So um, I got to make that a little bit more uh, clear Perfect. about everything. So any, any questions on your end? I pronounce your name appropriately you like the bio we are at is it hitch.studio is the website yep. okay that hitch, is the website. Yep. hitch dot studio and then uh and then we've got the i'll i'll put the uh, link to your talk as well as hitch.studio in the notes pages uh as well excellent thanks nathan you're welcome uh and it's cul-de-sac startup is the title of your talk that's correct all right so all right. Well, I am ready to rock. How about yourself? I'm ready. Let's okay, do this. Okay, let's do it. Yep. Let's do it. And we are on backup backup uh, power here on the, not backup power, but this is what I 
what I use for oh, recorders, nice. just because when I do Facebook Live, that disables the native Skype thing, but it's more than worth uh-huh. it because you get, you know, now you don't have to wait six weeks to publish and share this with your audience. You can do it, you know, right Excellent. away. So, Excellent. Good thing. So uh, we are live in three, two. We are live with Peter Lynch. Peter, are you ready to talk? Uh, I am always ready to talk. (laughs) Peter Lynch is a global executive who has worked for multiple Fortune 500 companies. Peter has managed to carve out success beyond the corporate world as a top 50 podcaster and award-winning entrepreneur. Peter's app has been downloaded in more than 70, yes, that's 70 countries. He was the winner of Denver's Hottest Startup, and his podcast was ranked higher than the Wall Street Journal and the Harvard Business Review. Peter Lynch, welcome to the talk. Thanks so much, Nathan. I am super excited to be here. Well, me too. Your talk is called The Cul-de-Sac Startup, and I was listening to it. It really hit home because you're talking about 35 and over being a little bit dissed by the startup community. Uh, I'm a part of a startup community here in Delaware uh, where I live, and uh, that was a little disturbing for me because I'm (laughs) solidly entrenched in middle age right now. So please take (laughs) us behind your talk. (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, behind the talk is really it's about the lessons that I learned while watching my kids in the cul-de-sac and what they taught me um, that allowed me to create my successful startups. And it's really about this idea that I think the next Silicon Valley is actually suburbia uh, because I think there are a million untapped ideas, um, dreams, vision, inventions that are sitting in the minds of people that don't believe they can do it. And I think one of the big reasons that they don't is because they have a full-time job or because they're middle-aged like us, they think it's too late, or they don't think they know how to do it. And so really all I do in this talk is I talk through a few simple lessons that I learned watching my kids that can help a person that is in that situation actually start to do something. Yeah, well, I I know you mentioned a few models of – entrepreneurial success i know a lot of the the leading companies give flex time or or give like 10 percent of their billable time to work on entrepreneurial projects or innovative or intrapreneurial projects what are some of the models that you mentioned in there because i know there's there's that day job to to dream job mentality that everybody has what are some things that you've seen that have really brought success Well, it's funny. First, to to the point you mentioned, you know, Google uh, last in 2016, 65 percent of their revenue was related to products that were developed in their what they called Google. Required their employees to actually try and build things. Peter, uh, if you can, if you can, if you can back up, it works, Peter. Um, (laughs) <laughs> Peter, we're having a slowdown on the Wi-Fi, so if you can go back and restart that whole thing, <laughs> my audio people will uh, will edit this out. You there? <laughs> oh, shoot. All right, this is great Facebook Live. This is why we, uh, we're, we're agile and lean. Oh, boy, there, and the, uh, there went the Skype. There went the Skype. Okay, we're going to call Peter back. <laughs> All right, we're going to try it back here. Uh, Let's try it again. Come on, Peter. Come back. Come back. There he is. I hope. Sorry, Nathan. Let's see what happened there. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 the Facebook Live is still going on my end, so that may have been a little bit unfortunate pinch. So, um, what, uh, what? Probably the best thing to do is just restart at the Google. You know that that whole yeah. bit because you started slowing down. <laughs> no, no worries. My audio people are going to cut this whole thing out for me. But, um, but uh, that's. I don't really remember what I said to tee up, but. <laughs> If you can, if you can, uh, actually, it was this. So, Peter, what what are some of the models of entrepreneurialism that help people go from their day job to their dream job? Yep. Yeah, and the the, the beautiful thing actually is uh, Google has tested this, and, and in 2016, 65 percent of their total revenue was related to products that were developed in what they called Google time. So it was that time where they were. Go ahead. 
Yeah, so the audio quality is also, you know, it's kind of snowy. So what I think, what, so let's hang up. I'll call you up again. If we okay. need to, let's go off the video if we absolutely need to do that. But sometimes it, it'll be uh, clear as a bell. So I'll call you right back. Sounds good. All right. Hey, Facebook Live, man. These are these are the hazards. These are the hazards of, of the industry right here. You hear that quality going down of the audio? Let's try it again. I'm sure it'll come back perfect. Man, we're having... Uh... Come on, Peter. <laughs> Don't fail me now. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> my, my, my. Let's try this again. Let's hang up on the hang up. And let's do it again. Oh, my. Biz and the Geek. Call unable to reach. Is he completely offline? <laughs> See, anybody... It, Anybody on Facebook Live? <laughs> this is the the glamorous world of uh, video podcasting right here, my friends. My gosh. Test, 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 test. Busy. He's probably trying to reach me. All right, Busy. Peter Lynch. Let's try. <laughs> let's try it again. Let's try it again. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. Hey, Nathan. So I'm on my phone right now. Okay. Um, I think what happened is my computer uh, crashed oh. and is restarting. Crash and burn. Okay. Well, no problem at all. Yeah. We're, we're going to jump right back in, and um, we've got you. We've got you right here. So, um, so you want to keep going though, because I yeah. know the audio is not great. Yeah, yeah. That's so. That's that's no problem. So, uh, Peter, I know you mentioned in your talk uh, several valid business models for people to have a, a side hustle and to go from their dream job to uh, from their day job to the dream job. Rather, uh, take us behind the talk in terms of those models that you've seen that have been working. Yeah, so it's it's really fascinating. Some of the biggest companies in the world have have found the power of this, and in particular Google. Um, what they found is that you know they had this Google time where they required people to invent, and in 2016, 65 percent of their revenue was tied to those specific activities. Sixty-five percent. Sixty-five percent. Not not six point five percent. Nice yeah. little extra margin, but sixty. Five percent of the revenue. That is correct. With products like Gmail, uh, with products like Android and the OS, those products were developed in Google Time, um, in time for invention. So companies are finding that they can actually not just it doesn't just make people better at their job, but it can actually provide some real revenue to a company. A lot of companies are starting programs where they pay people to build patents. Uh, there's some amazing programs. But a, a couple of the models that I talked about for entrepreneurs are, are one of the, my favorite ones is this idea of get sticks. And that the whole idea was built around when I walked out in the cul-de-sac and saw my son playing one of the best cul-de-sac games ever, which is kickball. And oh, I love it. I'm a big wanted, fan. Big fan. <laughs> it's a great, big fan. And I wanted to be a part of it. So I told him I was going to run to Target and buy some bases. But what he said was, Dad, we don't need bases. We have sticks. And they had just picked up sticks and made bases. And this is such a powerful idea for entrepreneurs because uh, the idea that we, we want things to be perfect before we start. Uh, but it's all about execution. You don't have to have perfect bases. So look in your life in the idea, the entrepreneurial idea that you're trying to execute on and find some sticks. Do some things and just start moving. So that's one of the ideas. Um, another idea is around this uh, concept that I call play. And I, uh, this is really where my talk was birthed from. Uh, my daughter, we were driving home from a play date 
and we turn around and look at her, and she is more asleep than I've ever seen anyone. I mean, she got to a level of exhaustion that I have never seen before. And so I'm sitting there looking at this, and I realized that the only way she could get to that level of exhaustion was because she was playing. And so I, I thought about it for myself, and I said, what in life is play for me? And so I started to build my entrepreneurial endeavors around play. Because when I came home from my day job, was I tired? For sure. I was tired, but play is one thing that you can tap into to find energy that you didn't even know you had. Yeah, so gamification is absolutely uh, huge. Did you... Did you uh... Uh, was it just kind of following your heart? Was it competition? Was it like a point system? What did you do to what what kind of play are you talking about, Peter? Well, first and foremost, it's about that thing in life that has deep meaning to you. You know, there's a psychologist, Chicks Mahalie, a famous Russian psychologist, and he studied Mr. Flow. Uh, you flow. And it's that intersection of where, something you're really good at with uh, a need that people have. And so to me, that's the foundation of play. It's that that's something that is re I'm really passionate about and I love. So when I built my app, the gamification to me was I took something that I was doing all the time every day because I had three young kids, which is taking photos and videos. And I built an app around that. So it was something now that was just a part of my life. That was, I think, the first part of the gamification. The second part was I, I did a lot of committing to people in my community. And I told them what I was doing and what I was going to do. And that created some accountability. And, you know, Harvard did a fantastic study where they were, they were looking at, you know, how do people generate success? And they had 10,000 different measures. They studied over 10 years. And they found one huge outlier for success. And it was accountability. They found that you were 225% more successful when you had accountability with someone. Now, uh, Talk Universe, we're going we're gonna to get Peter's app link, and we're going to stick that in the show notes so that you can take a look at that. So we have accountability. We have the app. We have uh, picking up sticks. What else, are you, uh, what else uh, have you seen work for people, Peter? Yeah, I mean, the other thing um, I, I found is you, you have to have uh, people around you to learn, but you have to have people around you that support what you're doing. You know, it's, it's really hard. One of the most common questions that I get is, how does your company um, let you do this? So you, you have to really work for companies that um, are not going to look down on this because I know some companies don't like side hustles um, it, and it's become, you know, a problem. And I was in a couple situations where it didn't work out really well because I didn't have alignment around that. So I think you want to find both communities and then also companies that help align to that, because what that's going to do is that's going to feed into this whole concept. And, and again, I, I do believe that companies are really getting behind this idea that uh, people that have side hustles are, are really bringing great things into work with them that transform the company. You know, one great example for me uh, was uh, I, I, when I launched my podcast, I, I did this because I wanted to learn how to podcast and I wanted to, you know, it was a, a growing trend and it's really impacting engagement and uh, people are consuming information really well. So I wanted to learn how to do it because I thought there might be an option for us to bring it in the company. So we launched this podcast and it wasn't but three months after I launched it that I brought a podcast into the company and we created an internal podcast for the company and it began to drive huge consumption, um, really effective engagement. And it was one, became one of the best communication vehicles that we leveraged inside the company. Now, I could only do that because I was doing something on the side and learning. So um, I, I really think companies are starting to, to get behind it. But again, I, I really think if you want to do that, you have to make sure you're in an environment where you can. We've been enjoying this conversation with Peter Lynch. His TEDx talk is called The Cul-de-Sac Startup. And in a moment, we will be right back with Peter Lynch in the Blitz Round. And we're right back here with Peter Lynch. It's time for the Blitz Round. Are you ready? I am ready. This is where I'm going to ask you a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of your talk. First question, were you selected to speak, Peter, or did you apply? I applied. Are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? I'm an improviser. 
Would you consider yourself a, a seasoned performer or newer to the stage? I would say a seasoned performer. So uh, that said, did you have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? Uh, both. How so? Um, you know, I, I am one of those guys that I, uh, I love the nervous energy that I get before I go on stage. And I leverage that to transmit uh, great confidence and excitement and passion. So I, I leverage both of those. You know, it was our talk was at Ellie Calkins Opera House. It's a 3,000 seat, one of the oldest opera houses in the U.S. Seinfeld performed the night before. There was a lot of reasons to be nervous. Uh, but I love to, to trans, transfer that nervous energy into the energy that creates a dynamic presentation. So Talk Universe, listen to the mindset shift. He's leaning in. He's, he's a junkie for, for the, the nerves. <laughs> good way to, 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 um, to, to say it. So, I mean, when you, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, love it. So what was, this is cut for time question, uh, Peter. What was the most painful part of your talk that you had to, to actually cut out? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I think it was probably related to the story that I told at the end about my mom. I had to reduce some of the details because that clock was staring me down and counting down. And I, the audience actually laughed a lot more than I was anticipating, which was a good thing. But that takes time. So I had to cut some of the details of that story. But when I went back and looked at it, it actually, I thought it, it went really well. Um, so it wasn't as much of a problem as I felt during the moment. Uh, funny how that works. We're, we're, we're yeah. you know, hanging on to those details. Uh, you're, you're very much like me. Peter, what's a tip, a technique, or a tool that helped you? Uh, to me, it was visualization. Uh, I, am, I, I spent you know, the, the two or three months leading up to it. Every morning when I woke up, the first thing I did is I would visualize the speech all the way through in my head, including seeing how the audience would respond. If I was going for a walk or a run or working out, I would visualize and go through the presentation. Before I went to bed every night, I would visualize that presentation. And that led to, I, I never delivered my TED Talk to anyone before I stepped onto the stage. Uh, mine was prepared through the visualization and the belief in the story I had to tell. Wow. Okay. Well, that, that's a first. <laughs> that's a first. How did that serve you, Peter? Uh, I think it served me in that my delivery was uh, dripping with authenticity. Hmm. Um, you know, I, it's one of my new projects that I'm working on is this idea of the ugly advantage. You know, I think uh, authenticity is a new currency. And so be because it felt like I was having the, a conversation with the audience for the very first time, um, there was a couple mix ups. You know, I, I repeated a couple words or said things a, a little bit wrong. But I think it conveyed a super high dose of authenticity. Um, what, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a performance like you mentioned. So what was the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your talk, Peter? Um, well, right before I wasn't, I didn't know there was going to be a performance artist. So somebody singing, there was a, a fantastic singer that went on before me and I was the last talk of the day. Um, I was anticipating that there was going to be you know, you know, people that had left and that there weren't going to be as many people in the audience. It was packed. So mm. stepping out onto the stage with the anticipation that there wouldn't be a full audience and it was almost everyone was still there uh, was pretty, sh that was pretty shocking. As I mentioned also, the amount of laughter um, that I got in response back from the audience was so much more than I was anticipating. That threw me off a little bit, but um, it, it also kind of fed a lot of excitement. So uh, congratulations on being a closer. I was a closer. I talked to a lot of closers on the talk here. What, what's your uh, quick advice uh, for people that are blessed enough to, uh, to be uh, 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 entrusted with that closing role? Uh, the thing I would say more than anything is conserve your energy. Because if you step, you know, I stepped into that day and I was so excited. But it was a long path. We had a break in the middle of a couple hours, and it was a long day. Um, and I was exhausted before I even stepped on the stage. So my advice would be just to make sure that you relax. Um, don't try to get yourself worked up too soon. Um, and, and know that everybody in there wants you to win. We'll be uh, right back and after talking with Peter Lynch. I want to give you a couple of uh, 
of links in our show notes page and be the talk.com. You can go to uh, Peter's website, which is hitch.studio, hitch.studio as well. You can watch his talk, which is called The Cul de Sac Startup, uh, at our web uh, uh, notes page at be the talk.com. And in a moment, we'll be right back with Peter Lynch and the final word of advice. And we're back with the final word of advice for Talk Universe. Peter Lynch, what is it? Um, biggest word of advice, I would say, is move. Don't be afraid of where you are at a stage in life. If you think you're too uh, old, you think you're too young, it doesn't matter. I, I love this one idea around age. Um, at 57 years old, Stephen Covey had not released The Seven Habits, a book that would go on to sell 25 million copies and be one of the most popular business books ever. If he allowed age to stop him, we would be missing something amazing. Colonel Sanders at that age was living out of his car. He went on to become one of the first billionaires uh, in his 80s. So I would say just move. Find something that you can do today or this week that moves you towards that dream you have. Peter Lynch, thanks for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thanks, Nathan. And that's a wrap. So sorry about that, man. Yeah, Please. no problem. Well, I've, I've got an apology for you as well. I think I may have goofed on the Facebook Live, uh, and I, I realized about halfway through we don't have the split screen thing uh, happening. And that, wow. may, that may be because we had to restart a, a couple of times. I don't remember, but I'm, I'm hoping people could at least hear it and um, – you know, and, and at least have that audio asset. So we just, no worries, man. we just plow through it and do the best we can, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right, man. Hey, it's the ugly advantage. I'm okay with that. Yeah, cool. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it is an ugly advantage. Facebook Live, we're going to go offline for just a minute, and uh, I'll be back with the next guest uh, whenever that is. 